come true And I wonder If you know What it means What it means And I wonder If you know What it means What it means And I wonder If you know What it means create a new trance one must go through a type of shift okay a paradigm is a worldview what somebody deems as important 
what somebody's selective focus is focused on and what somebody's mindset is currently in, right? And a mindset is sort of like the settings of our mind or our brain. And creating new par paradigms or patterns, you could say, is all about, in a way, letting go of the past in order to create space for new experiences. Everything that we experience sort of colors the lens that we look through. And when we carry around all of the weight that goes with all of our past and what we've seen, what we believe now, it sort of just traps us in the past in a type of trance because we're able to remember, we're able to regret, we're also able to think about things in the future um, from a place of fear. But all that's doing is hijacking the present moment. So you're not actually thinking about the past. You're not actually thinking about the future. You are creating a pattern in your brain that might think about the past or think about what you think the future might look like. But all you're doing at the end of the day is ruminating and creating that experience all over again. You can't really remember anything. You can only recreate it in the present. Why that is important is because a lot of people, they get stuck on what has been. And if you're stuck on what has been, you're not gonna be able to shift into what could be. That's what embracing new possibility is all about, is taking accountability for growing and expanding and self-evolving or hypnotizing yourself or manifestation, however you want to describe it. In a way, it is placebo effect, but it's also belief. It's everything basically comes true per individual. So if you tell yourself a lie that is very beneficial for you, for example, you start telling yourself that you feel good. Now, I'm not saying this is a good thing to do because it's sort of gaslighting yourself as well if you don't feel good. But what that could do is it starts conditioning you to feel like you are aligning with that pattern, right? Maybe that's how manifestation works, is we think about something in the future, uh, positive experiences, positive things that you want to occur. And that's how manifestation works, is you're piecing it together ahead of time. But it is a blueprint stored within you. And your brain knows what that blueprint looks like and knows how to recite that blueprint now because it's discovered, it, built in, right? Just like anything, just like learning a new song. You memorize the words of that song because it's catchy. You are in a, a trance that's actually paying attention. That's how everything works. We are actually very good at remembering things. It's just whether or not we're paying attention or not. And whether or not we're paying attention or not, it is determined by whether or not we think something is relevant. If we think that something is relevant, we're gonna be more attuned to that thing. Our self-perception is determined by a number of things, like some people, their selective focus, if they're in a survival situation, they might think about money, food, water, and shelter. But if somebody is in an expanded state of mind and they don't really have to think about survival anymore, they might be able to delegate themselves new tasks, perhaps managing uh, something bigger than just paycheck to paycheck, you're able to manage a whole corporation at this point because your brain is, um, is it's not bounded, okay? So that's what the difference between a leader it and a, somebody who is following would be, is the leader is sort of unbounded. And then the, the follower is bounded by whatever the follower decides to follow. The reason I say the leader is unbounded is because the leader decides what it even means to lead, because that's what a leader is. You create your own meaning for things. There's people that have titles that plan for the future, but it's not always under the paradigm that's in the best interest for everybody. Like, it's not always the best leader. Some people just want to lead so that they have a bunch of people to tell what to do, and then there are some people who want to lead and go first, if that makes sense. So they want to walk into the darkness and then 
tell everybody behind them, hey, I see what's going on. Uh, we don't have to worry in this little section here because I already looked. And that's sort of what a leader does. People's ability to be led is determined by their self-perception because, you know, I could be a leader, but I don't always want to lead. I want to be able to be led as well. Having that leadership mentality 24 seven, it stops you from listening in a way if you let ego get into it. Ego would be control. Oh, I can tell you what to do because I'm a leader. It's not about that. It's about you are in a good position because of who you are. Who you are determines how you affect everybody that you're leading as well. That's how our whole body works because we're leading ourselves as well. We're leading ourselves each moment. It's important to create new patterns because that would be walking into the unknown with a type of integrity, right? You have to walk out into the unknown either way. So might as well accept it and look around while you're doing it instead of just, oh, I don't know what to do anyway. Just look at the ground. So it's actually better to shift into new paradigms instead of thinking about old things because now you're creating new patterns that will implant or imprint inside of you and then you'll be seeking them out over and over again effortlessly. They'll just attract into your life unconsciously because you are aligned and it's that simple. People don't know what it necessarily means to create new patterns all the time. They might think, oh, what do I have to do? What do I have to do? You don't have to do anything. And that's a new pattern, isn't it? So the whole purpose or meaning of life is to discover and rediscover our own self-love. So like what I see in others, what I see in a movie, what I see in a certain environment or, you know, maybe, maybe it's smoky outside tonight and there's a little smell and I take in all of those sensations and because I associate them a certain way in me, I can now love myself for that. We're um, self-validating, but that is the key to being independent and independence is the key to being a leader because a leader has to go first. Discovering ourselves is a lonely journey but it's not lonely if you enjoy your company, right? So yeah, we might be alone, but the more we uncover ourselves, the more we realize that we're, we'd rather have a connection with ourselves than have a mundane, shallow connection with everybody else, right? Because then you're, you're doing things for you at that point. You're not fitting into an environment or fitting yourself into a standard that the room would accept or what you think that the room would accept being a leader is about like sort of stop mirroring your environment you know a lot of people they mirror the things around them because that's what we grew up doing in our childhood that's how we survive is mirroring the people around us not going outside of the the rules set for us basically so compliance was the best survival mechanism at that point but now you're entering a new era, so compliance isn't necessarily the best um, pathway forward, especially for making business decisions or, you know, working a job. You don't want to be the guy that complies and lets everybody push you over, right? You don't want to be a pushover. You want to have your own value. You want to have your own standards for yourself so that when you go into that business, you can set the price for how much you're worth. That person that you're getting a job from, they're going to look at you and they're going to think, do I want this person on my team? Is this person going to be too powerful for this team? Is this person going to comply? They look for that stuff, right? So not, not that you're too powerful for the team, but some leaders might be um, insecure of your leadership and in that case that job's not meant for you is it so you go do a job interview and you try to stand up for yourself in it a little bit have a backbone don't think to yourself oh I gotta get this job because otherwise I'm gonna be starving because what do you think that the employer is gonna do they're gonna take advantage of that paradigm that you're living in now what happens if you take advantage of the paradigm you're living in 
you take free will over your interactions, you take accountability, and you're going to end up making more money because you're more disagreeable. If we want to have a fulfilling human experience, it's not so much about reaching all of these different things around us. It's mainly about coming back to the moment and not having so many attachments and also forgiving ourselves for everything we've experienced and done and not done. Um, you are forgiven in this moment. And then what we want to do now, now that we're forgiven, now that we're present, right, is start increasing our sensitivity. Increasing our sensitivity to our body, our sensations. That's what that means. So when we expand our sensations, somebody could be suffering on the other side of the world, right? Um, and you might feel empathy because you see it, or maybe you're on your phone and you're scrolling something, there's news, right? And you see this thing, and it's this pain and suffering happening on the other side of the planet, and you feel empathy. Now, after you see that enough times on your phone, maybe you're like, wait, this is a pattern. Why do I always see these negative things happening on the other side of the world on my phone? That might turn you into a desensitized person because now you're seeing all this stuff happening all over the world, all this suffering and pain, but you don't know where, where it is. You don't know how often it happens and it's always being fed to you on your phone. So it makes you desensitize to events happening. And that's what a lot of people are in currently. They think, okay, there's this pain and suffering. I am a human being. I just noticed it. Now I can either feel for that person or I could shut off my emotions. Feeling for people all the time, it takes a lot of energy, doesn't it? So if a person is constantly exposed to pain and suffering, what they're going to do is turn off their heart. They'll go cold. They'll become desensitized to their environment or the life experience that they're having. And this is just a defense mechanism to stay alive. But what happens when the thing that activated that um, mechanism goes away and we don't even notice it? Well, it still exists in our brain. So what we want to do is shift out of the defense mechanisms of old patterns of trying to preserve our state. And we should become more sensitive. And if that means that you have to experience negative emotions, then that means that that's what we should do. Because all of these emotions are giving us insight. It's all there to give you information to propel you onto the next section of your life so it would be unwise to ignore that right and to desensitize or to numb yourself into a state of mind that doesn't care anymore oh it doesn't matter what happens either way because it's all hell right now what that mindset of society does now is it hurts everybody around you because you're projecting what your thought of society is on everybody which is a subjective paradigm and mindset that you are perpetuating forward. So that's like, instead of transmuting the childhood trauma, you just say, screw it, it's the way it is. We're gonna just roll with the childhood trauma and start making it worse, pretty much, because that's what that does. Yeah, we don't wanna suppress anything because what we resist persists. So if we let it go without any logical reason, you just think about it and let it go. That's it. That's all you got to do. Think about, oh, this has happened. Maybe grieve a little bit. Think, oh, when I was a kid, that really sucks that that happened that way. And then you move on. You're like, okay, I learned my lesson. Now we're here, right? What a lot of people do, though, is they stay there. They stay back there, and they're like, oh, well... I could shift into a new trance, but there was that one moment that I could never get over or forgive myself for. And I know it because, and then they'll tell you the whole story of why they're stuck in that past paradigm. 
So it comes into your awareness. Don't defend the things that hold you back from independence. You get what I mean by that? Being able to do what you want to do, um, experience what you want to experience, and not have this mentality that society or a person a long time ago made it so you can't do that. Because that's just a, an illusion that we give energy to. That's why it's important that we give our energy to illusions that actually support us, you know? And that's what the self-hypnosis aspect of this is, is you can just make up shit in your head and start believing it. Because that's what we do anyway. There's people who believe and there's people who don't believe and, oh, I don't believe in God. That doesn't make any sense. Well, yeah, you're right. The way that you're thinking of it makes no sense, but it's true in everybody else's mind that it makes sense in. So everything makes sense to us in the context that it makes sense. We can change our perception with new information, with new paradigms, with new introduction, with a new introduction software to our brain, right? And it could be as simple as this if you let it be, because every bit of information, just like a song, just like memorizing a song, it imprints in your brain and then you forget it, but it's still there. It's a subconscious imprint. And a lot of people don't realize how fast it imprints because it's lightning quick if you let it be. If you're thinking about how much you forget, you're going to be forgetting a lot. But if you think about how much you remember, you will remember more and more. It will start magnifying and picking up pace and weight. Okay? Like attracting towards a center point, right? Like a star or something that's collecting mass or information or data or nutrients or sustenance or source energy. The source is whatever we deem it to be in that moment, right? So what does that mean? It means it's us. <laughs> we are the source of energy because if everything that we manifest comes true immediately in the form of thought, what's the common denominator there? Is it everything around us or is it us? Well, both because things coincide with one another so we're having a subjective experience within the objective reality and everything is subjectively objective for me which is a lot so all this information makes sense to me but for you guys it might be subjective to you so you might take the interpretation of what i'm saying and make it in your own way in your own brain and manifest it in the way that you manifest it. And that's not in my control, that's in your control. How you decide to take information and what you do with it is up to you, right? Okay, so I wanna just get into a few common mistakes that people might get into when they're looking for this type of balance in life. The balance of creating new experiences and being present and enjoying it. One common loop is some people feed the parts of themselves that promote stagnation of energy. So that would be like thinking about a, a thought that literally sucks you dry of energy. So why would you give your energy towards that instead of something that empowers you? For example, you're feeding the negative so you don't think that there's positive. And then that becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy just like how if we focus on a positive thing, it will amplify and magnify, right? So another thing that people might make it a mistake doing is they see darkness within themselves and then they just turn away from it and they numb themselves and turn cold. So if you see darkness, it's actually better to look at it because then it goes away faster. You start um, you start the healing process and if you're not shining the light in the dark then you're not even going to be able to see what to heal so you're not even going to begin the process you're going to be in a numb state I mean I enter this stuff all the time so I understand that there's certain people that they have actual reasons why they might want to numb themselves I don't have as much of a traumatizing life as I could right 
There's some people who really have a reason for why they numb themselves. I'm just trying to give everybody a solution if you want it. Like, that's all this is, all right? Another thing that people might make a mistake doing is being their own worst enemy. And what that looks like is projecting fears and smoke and mirrors. So that's what fears are really, is a bunch of fake illusions that we're creating in the present moment. And it's the fears are from the future, usually, because that's what fear is, is afraid of something happening. You can't really be afraid of the past. You more so have regret from the past. But yeah, it's very important to be in the moment and transcend these realities and paradigms and traumas and all of this stuff. Because if you don't, you're gonna be perpetuating living a cycle. And I think that a lot of people, they don't wanna live in a cycle. They wanna live in their reality, their paradigm that they create with their intention, right? With their freedom. So another thing that people might make a mistake doing is bullying themselves or their inner child, their soul into change. So that's like gaslighting yourself because you're like telling yourself, oh, you didn't make that money yet. Why didn't you make that money yet? You had all day. Now, is that going to help you? Did it solve anything? Did it get to the root of the, the reason why this keeps happening? No. It just beats yourself up. And that's another coping mechanism is just disowning and belittling ourselves in a type of process that makes us so that we don't even have to look at the stuff anymore. I'm just a jerk. <laughs> now that's a real defense mechanism right there. If somebody is bullying themselves into change. Because that shows, what does that show? A person who bullies themselves into change does not love themselves in the way that they could in that moment. That's all. There is something that we could understand from our self-perception and bullying ourselves, which is what we set as a standard for ourselves to complete before we can love ourselves or be happy. And if you can identify that process, you can transmute it. You can change it. For example, what my value is tied to right now is not whether or not this video is good or not, or if I make money from the future, or it's just tied to this moment and this moment only. And that's why I'm able to go into a flow state and relax and make this video without so much overthinking. When I start overthinking, I start tensing up. I start thinking of how people perceive me. And then I'm not thinking of how I perceive myself. See how that could be a challenge? Another way that people might sabotage themselves <laughs> is by saying that it's all society's fault that life is sucks. Life sucks. There's no opportunity. The world is screwed up. All of this is a projection of fears and it comes true within us because we're the ones projecting it so imagine a person who thinks that the world is out to get them i was one of these people so i would know i'll describe it you think that you're a victim of your circumstances you think that there's a bunch of billionaires and messed up psychopaths all made up terms, by the way, um, just like everything. <laughs> but we, we, we make up these stories in our head that we're just victims of society and these people that control society. But we buy into it, so there's no victim anywhere because it's all a matter of perception and we all have individual right to our perception. Just because somebody feels like their choice was taken away doesn't mean that it was. And it's important to make that distinction that we all have free will despite not feeling it. Right? Because we, it's easy to play into the idea that 
destiny is unfolding behind us and we don't have any control in our life. But what does that do for you? It makes you sit on the back burner. It makes you put your dreams aside. There are people who be something and then they do something and then they have something. Okay, so there's people who... Okay, I'm a person who's speaking right now. I'm doing this video. And then I have the video. There's some people who think they need to have the video before they're good at speaking, if that makes sense. So like, I need money before I can feel successful. Or do you need to feel successful before you have money? You get what I'm saying there? How that could be an incredible, distinct difference of how we live our lives. You're imagining yourself rather than at the whim of everybody else, you are the producer, you are the creator of the experience. So things aren't happening um, against you or life isn't happening to you anymore. Life is happening for you because of you, okay? And if a person can successfully shift their mindset and start creating new ideas where you're actually mindfully having these types of internal dialogue where you ask yourself questions, where you seek out a safe place and you just sit there and you think with no attachment to the outcome. Having the expectation for a result will leave you disappointed if you don't reach the result, right? So if you don't have any expectation or attachment to an outcome, then it's all gratitude. It's just like, okay, I enjoyed that experience, but not because I was seeking for it to be enjoyable, but because I just naturally was present and tuned. And isn't that what we're all living for? Isn't that why we want to make money? Isn't that why we live life? Is so that we can make the money, so that we can release it. Release it into our experience that we choose to validate us. <laughs> it's pretty, pretty cool. I hope that you enjoyed. Talk to you later.